Welcome to the Twin Valley Technology and Engineering Getting Started with Inventor series. Autodesk Inventor is a powerful drafting and design tool used to create 3D models. We use it at Twin Valley to communicate parts that we've created, to actually make parts. We can transfer the parts that we've created onto other software and create code for the CNC machines that we have. We can create parts that we can then transfer to the 3D printers that we have, or to actually be lasered out. So it's very versatile. It's more than just a CAD program. Today's first tutorial in the series is to create a project on Inventor. Now, if you've never used Inventor before, we want to click on the existing icon. And I've gone ahead and done that already because it takes a little while for it to load. It's a very comprehensive program. Once it loads, we want to come over to the project folders and click, click project. Now, one of the benefits of using the project folder is helping with file management. It'll keep all of our files, especially if we have more than one, together. And in our tutorial of the tool tote, we're going to have a couple of them. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to select new. We want a single user project. And then you can click next. Under the project name, I'm going to type in tool tote. Okay. And then we have to give it a direction. Where do we want this file uh, to be placed? And, and you're going to want to put it in your network drive. All right, now your network drive is going to contain TV and then your number. I'm going to place it as well on the network, but in a different spot. Okay. And I'm going to, as you are, going to make a new folder. Once that new folder is made, we're going to rename it, and I'm also going to call it Tool Tote. For each new project that you create, you would want to create a new project folder name. Once I've done that, I select OK. I can select finish and you can see up here it says tool tote it's located in the spot where I want it to be and I can click done I'm now ready to begin step two of creating the tool tote in Inventor Welcome back to the construction of the tool tote in Autodesk Inventor. These couple tutorials are going to show you how to make the individual parts that we can put together to learn a little bit about how an Autodesk Inventor works. I've put up on the screen what the final product will look like. Yeah, that tool tote is now assembled. You will be given either a digital version or a paper version of a set of plans, what we call working drawings, that you can glean the information from as you begin to make your parts on Inventor. This working drawing will give you all the details necessary to create your tool tote. It gives you not only the description of the overall sizes, but any of the details needed, such as the, the chamfer, the arcs, and the radiuses, and, and, uh, and any of the details or measurements that we need. Right. The tool tote is made of individual parts that we will then assemble uh, in Inventor as well. When we call the solid modeling, you're going to make a solid model of the two ends, the two sides, the bottom, and the dowel handle. All right, so let's begin. You are going to open a new file. <coughs> now, earlier on, on the first video, we learned how to create a project in Inventor. So we want to make sure that we are located or we're checked off on the actual two tool tote and that we can begin from there. Anytime that we open a new part, we're going to open a standard IPT. IPT stands for Inventor Part. So if I click on that, it gives me the interface. Over on my left is a browser that's going to give me any history or parts that I have here that I can modify if necessary. And across the top ribbon are some of my commands. We're going to begin by creating a sketch. It gives you a three-dimensional work plane of a couple options. 
For this exercise, every part that we're going to create for the tool tote will be in the XY plane. So I click on the XY plane. According to our plan, we are to construct a side. Now we're going to create these products in the direct order that they have uh, listed on the parts list. So we're going to create a side, a bottom, an end, and then the handle. Our side has a measurement of 3 quarters of an inch thick, 4 inches wide, and 18 inches long. So I'm going to select a rectangle. I'm going to just click and drag, and it doesn't have to be the exact size. Notice that my top and bottom lines are parallel, my left and right lines are parallel, and they are perpendicular. I'm going to create a dimension similar to what my plan calls for. The length of the ends is 18 inches, or the sides is 18 inches long. The width is 4 inches long. I have a navigational cube over here and, and I can also spin the wheel of my mouse, but I like to use the home key. That home key will bring everything into perspective of what we're doing. If I want to click the front, I can click the front. It's not a three-dimensional object yet, so right now I'm just going to stay with home. I have the overall dimensions of the size, and it's time now that I will click Finish and Extrude. Now, extrude is going to provide for me some thickness. The extrusion always defaults to a one inch, but according to our plans, we want to change it to 0.75, or three quarters of an inch. That now <coughs> is a finished size. However, it has one feature uh, that we have to create. On this finished size, it has what we call a bevel or a, a chamfer. That chamfer is for decorative purposes. It makes it look nice, but it's also going to measure three quarters of an or three eighths of an inch thick by three or three eighths of an inch wide. Okay. So going back to my part, I'm going to create a chamfer. Okay, and it shares uh, with the fillet. Any number of these features, if they have an arrow, you can click down and it will give you some more options. In this case, I want the chamfer. And according to my plan, it's 0.375. And I'm going to select that top edge. And you can see it already uh, did that for me, so I can select OK. And that's all there is to it. That first part is already created for us. If I go to my side here, okay, it looks very similar to what I need. All right. So at this point, I'm going to go home, and I'm going to go File, Save As. It's opened up into my projects. I need to give it a name. And according to my part, list. I'm going to call this the tool tote side. Okay. And our next video will start with the bottom. Welcome back to the tool tote Autodesk Inventor tutorials. This short video is going to help us construct or create the bottom of the tool tote, one of the simpler parts to make. And if we take a look first at our plan, we're going to look at the bottom located here in the hidden view with a hidden line. Measures about 16 and a half inches long, five and a half inches wide, and three quarters of an inch thick, also listed in our parts list. Five and a half by 16 and a half. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with a new IPT, standard IPT. We're going to begin with a sketch and again select our XY plane. I'm going to go ahead and create a rectangle. And I can dimension immediately the 16.5 and the 5.5. And as before, when I finish my sketch, I can extrude to 0.75, and there's my bottom, one of the simplest ones to make. So we're going to file Save As, already in my projects. 
I'm going to click on side, rename it to bottom. And my bottom. Welcome back to the construction of the tool tote using Autodesk Inventor. In this video that we're going to work on or concentrate on the ends of the tool tote. Probably one of the more sophisticated parts. It's going to have a couple steps to it. Uh, so again, let's take a look at our plans. Our plans call for uh, a rough blank that's going to measure three quarters of an inch thick, five and a half inches wide, and seven and a half inches tall. Okay. It also has some other features here, such as uh, a, a little bevel or chamfer, a radius arc, and then holes to the inside that will accept uh, that the dowel handle. Okay. So we're going to have to come back and refer to this plan to get some of these features. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start a new, just like before, standard IPT. Start with the sketch, select the XY plane, and go ahead and begin. And as before, I'm going to start with a rectangle and give it some of those dimensions. My bottom measures five and a half. My top or my my length measures seven point five. Now, what I try to explain to students is it, it's a good idea to, to create an inventor how you would actually build this tool tote. So if I were building the tool tote, I would have to square up a board that has those dimensions and then cut those features or lay out those features later. So in essence here, we're going to create a finished sketch and extrude this 2.75. Okay, so that would act as the actual blank before we create or before we put some of these features on it. And if we refer back to our plan, the side walls of the end measure four and a quarter until they start to move out, round off at a radius of one and a quarter, and then return to four and a quarter. But everything pivots around this point right here. This point right here, measuring an inch and a quarter from the top, not only serves as the pivot point for this radius, but also for the handle hole. All right. So back to my part, I'm going to project, I'm going to put another sketch on top of this. So the first time we've only sketched as our original drawing. This time I'm going to put a sketch on top of my part. And I'm going to project the geometry and click on that part. Now, by projecting the geometry, you can see that it turned yellow. So that means that anything I do here will recognize that yellow and cling to it. Okay. So I'm going to start by putting a point in the center here. That point is going to act as my pivot point. Now, if I, if I scan in here a little bit, the beauty of Inventors is going to do a couple things for me. As I go across the top here, see where this turns green? Green automatically signals that it's the center point of that 5.5. So I really don't even have to do the math. Even if I bring it down here, the dotted line, see the dotted line at the top? That dotted line indicates that it's center. So as long as I'm in that center orientation, I can click on my part, and then I'm going to right click and click OK. That's going to provide for me the center of the five and a half, but I also have to then indicate that it's an inch and a quarter from the top. So I'm going to take my dimension, click on the top and that point, and type in 1.25. Okay. All right. All right. Now, to get that. 0.125 radius, I'm going to select a circle, use that point as the center point, and it should cling 
onto that top because I projected the geometry. That's a little too far, that's a little too shallow. Right there, and that symbol right above it is called a tangent arc. That means that my circle and the line have now touched. And I click on that, and it will give me a two and a half inch circle, but a circle with a one and a quarter inch radius. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a line and I'm just going to draw a line on this side. Right click, OK. And I'm going to draw a line on this side and click OK. Now that looks really sloppy, but you'll see where I'm going with this a little bit later. I want my point to be consistent. I want it to touch this end. And what I'm trying to develop here is that this four and a quarter is where we start to make that cut. So I'm going to take my dimension and I'm going to dimension from the bottom to that line 4.25. And I'm going to do the same over here, 4.25. Okay. Now I can try to swing this in, but then I, it's kind of an arbitrary guess. All right. So up here I have some constraints that will do it for me. I'm going to click on the tangent constraint, and I'm going to click my line and my circle and it does it for me. I click on my line and click on my circle and it touches for me. All right, so there's that tangent arc again. All right. When I have right click and finish that, what I need to get rid of then is it's kind of I'm going to get out my little eraser here or my trim and I'm going to trim anything that I don't want Now it's taking the shape of my outer edge. When I'm done, I click Finish. I like using the isometric home button. I'm going to extrude. All right, now this is going to be new. Last time we ex extruded just to create some thickness. This time we're going to extrude, and we're going to drop down here to the Cut feature. I'm going to select what I want to be cut away and it just so happens that it's three quarters of an inch or I could have selected all and it cuts that away and now it looks like my end. However, I'm not quite finished. I still have to, in essence, drill the hole to accept the wooden dowel. So I get to put one more sketch on that face. I'm going to also project the geometry because, see that little dot right there? I want that dot. I'm going to put the point back on there. I'm going to create a circle that measures 0.75. Okay. I'm going to finish my sketch. I'm going to extrude and cut again. But instead of now going all the way or the distance, my hole, if I check my dimension, only goes half of an inch deep. Okay. So I need to type in here 0.5, and I'm finished. Okay, It's kind of hard to see, but there's my, it's what we call a blind hole. It's accepted on one side, but I can't see it on the other. All right. So at this point, I want to file Save As, my tool tote, and, and click Save.
All right, the last physical part that we're going to need to make is the actual handle of the tool tote. In, in uh, materials, we would call that the dowel. And it's one of the, again, one of the more simplest parts. You might even be able to do this without a, a video. So we're going to go new, standard IPT. And we're going to start with a sketch. And again, we're going to go to the XY plane. Okay, taking a look at the plan, the handle. Uh, measures three quarters of an inch or 0.75 in diameter and it's 17 and a half inches long. And because it's a circular part it only needs two dimensions. 0.75 diameter, 17 and a half inches long. So I'm going to start by creating a circle. I'm going to dimension that circle 0.75. I'm going to finish the sketch and I'm going to extrude it to 17.5 and just like that we have the handle. We're going to save as. In my projects and just like that we have all of the parts needed to create the tool tote. In our next video we're going to learn how to assemble these parts in an assembly drawing. Welcome back to the Tool Tote tutorial uh, utilizing Autodesk Inventor solid modeling software. This episode is going, to, uh, is going to deal with the actual assembly of all of the parts in our previous versions of our uh, tutorials we learned how to make all these individual parts today we're going to learn how to put them together so what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to new and now instead of selecting the individual part we're going to come over here to these icons that look like they're building blocks and the, the as the image shows it looks like you're building together some images and we're going to use a standard IAM standard IAM stands for inventor assembly Okay, so we're going to click on that and create. All right, and our interface looks a little bit different and yet the same. So uh, our browser over here is going to give us our history and things that we can adjust. Uh, so up here on the top, we're going to use the place the views. And if our project is still linked up, these are all of the parts that we've used. So what I want to do is I want to individually bring these parts uh, onto the interface. So I'm going to click on bottom, I'm going to open one, and I'm going to left click. There's a bottom. Now what I could do is if I wanted to, I could click as many of these as I need, but I only need one. So now I'm going to right click and click OK. I'm going to place my ends. All right. I have two that I will then click and right click. I'm going to click my handle to which I have one and right click OK and then my sides two of those alright now as I zoom out I have all of these parts over here in the browser and as of right now when I click the the home this is kind of important because we don't want these pieces to be scattered all over the place and I can click and move these almost in any orientation that I want. All right. If I need to rotate them or free move them, I have some options up here. But I, what I want to do is, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll see how this works in a little bit down the road, but what you want to do is you want to take this back one here. Uh, and as you can see, when I click on this, it lights up over here in my browser. I want to right click on that one. And I want to make sure that that one is grounded. All right, you can see that there's a little tack on there. So that's going to keep that from moving. All right, and that's going to be important for later. All right. Now, in this assembly process, uh, we're going to use some constraints. And as its name implies, we're going, to, we're going to hold them or constrain them from moving. But you want to think of constraints as the glue or the nails that hold your tool tote together. And it's pretty straightforward, but most constraints need about three points.
So if I were over in the shop or over in the lab and I wanted to glue this together, I would take the ends of my bottom and glue it to the inside face of my uh, ends. And, and that's the kind of the terminology that you're going to need to know. So let's go ahead and do that. When I place my constraints, it's going to give me a number of options, some that we'll get into when we use the DAO. But these are the two most important ones. If you look at this one, this one is what they call mating. And it looks like it's edge to edge end or end to end. This one is flush or face to face. All right. So I'm going to start with my mating. And I'm going to mate my bottom end to my inside face. And that little click will tell it to, uh, it tells me that it worked. So then I, it's important that we click apply. All right. It's not quite in the right orientation. So at this point, I want to flush this edge with this edge and apply. And I want to turn it over. And you can see that these are not quite flush, so I want to make sure that I'm still on the flush phase and flush those together. Now, once I've done that, if I come over here and I just highlight the end of my tool tote, you can see that I have a mated one, a mated or flush and flush. And if ever I make a mistake, I can right click on them and delete it. Okay, so that'll give me some options. All right. All right, so what I want to do next is let's take a look at these sides. Let's, t let's put these sides together. So this side, if the, the chamfer is on the outside, that means that I have to constraint, and I'm going to start with mating my bottom edge to my bottom edge. Okay, and then I'll apply that. And the process is very similar. I'm going to now flush the bottom edge of my side to the bottom of my bottom. Apply. And I'm going to also flush the end to the outside edge there, uh, or the outside face of my end. So I hit apply. Oh, so now it's, really, it's, coming, it's coming together. I need to go ahead and do that on the other side of the tool tote. So we're back to mating. I'm going to mate this bottom edge to my side face. Click apply. Face to face. Oops. Now what happened was I didn't click to my f to my flush and it did it gave me an undesirable result. So before I I can either delete that, go back or just Fix it by flushing where it where it's needed. Click apply, and now make sure that I flush bottom and bottom. All right, look at that. Okay. All right. Now I'm gonna go ahead and place my dowel in here before I put my other end on. Dowel constraints is slightly different. And it's actually a little bit easier. Right? I have two. Here's a, the center of the hole, of the diameter of the hole, and the center of this dowel. So I'm going to move to insert. And I, I have two options as well. Do I do them opposed or do I do them aligned? And I want to align these. Okay. Oh. Uh, pardon that. I want to. I actually want to oppose those. Okay. All right. And if I look real close, okay. Whoops. What it did was. Let's try that again. We're gonna insert. All right. And I'm gonna click before I click apply. If I look real close here. All it did was make sure that this outer edge was flush with this outer face. But we know according to our plan that the depth of the hole is 0.5 or half of an inch deep. So if I type in the offset 0.5, 
right? See where it's moving 0.5 away from that edge. All right. Now, that's not quite right, so we need to do just the opposite of that and type in a negative 0.5 and then click Apply. And that means it's that seated inside of there, so it goes all the way to the depth of that hole. All right. Now, we can go back to our original constraints. I need to mate the inside of that face to the inside here. Okay. I can click apply. I want to get this to be turned around. Okay. And I also want to flush it with the ends. All right. All right. Now, that last one didn't work for me. So I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to constrain this. There we go. And then it's done. All right. Now, the reason that we got this one to be pinned or grounded is when I click the home button, I want it to be in that orientation. But on our plan, we want the front to be in this position. All right. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click over here and I'm going to reset the current view as front. All right. Now, that doesn't change my isometric view, but it does change my front, my top, and my right side to be more consistent with what my working drawing is going to be. All right. So then now I want to file save as. And this is going to be my tool tote. I can call it the tool tote assembly and save. Congratulations. Welcome back to our tutorial on the tool tote utilizing Autodesk Inventor. This is the concluding video uh, of our construction of the tool tote. Today we're going to work on the construction of a working drawing. And a working drawing communicates all of the measurements needed to create this product. In our previous videos, in our previous versions, we've looked at creating some of the different parts. We've assembled the product uh, in an assembly. Um, now what we're going to do is create what we call a working drawing. A working drawing is going to consist of a front view, a top view, and a right side view, uh, all with dimensions and or notes, and a parts list. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. You are given a, uh, a capture, a picture, of what this final working drawing is to look like, so you could go ahead and get started on all of your parts. What I want you to do is create this working drawing exactly as you see it on the screen. So let's go ahead. So we're going to start with a new one. We're going to work at or look at a TVTE drawing. All right, we'll put, we can put in our name. Or the drawing name. And your last name. All right, so that's already done for you. All right, and again, up here on the top ribbon, we're going to start with a base view. And typically, the good, uh, a good rule to follow is to start with your uh, front view. And as you can see, because it was more part of my projects, uh, it already knew which one to get. All right, so if it doesn't do that, what you can do is come over here and search 
for either the part or the project that you're looking for. Right. Now it already did that, but as you can see, uh, this is coming in as an end view, and it's way too big. So I'm going to take a look at and uh, see what our what it what it refers to our front view. Uh, I want our front view to look like this. The way we drew it looks a little bit like the left view. All right. Once I click on my uh, sheet of paper. I'm going to bring it up to create the top view and click. Bring it over to make the right view and click. And then uh, just right click and say create. All right. Now, as a rule of thumb, our working drawings always line up uh, in views. When I click on my origin, this was the first one that I brought in here, you can see that those lines will move in unison. All right, so that's desirable. That's something that we want. I can move them out a little bit to give myself a little bit of space. And on my original drawing, it looks like I have the right scale. If I wasn't sure, I can change this scale. By changing the number, let's say I make that 2, I've made that much larger, okay, and that's not something that I'm interested in right now. If I make this, say, a 5, then it's almost too small. So it was very good where it came in. All right. Now, I'm also going to come over and click on a hidden line. And as you might know, a hidden line is going to give me uh, a representation of what the existing parts look like, but as its name implies, it's hidden behind uh, a part. So here, my bottom uh, is represented with that hidden line, but I really can't see it because this end piece is in the way. All right. So that's going to be good. All right, now let's start with some of our dimensions. I'm going to take a look at dimensioning just like I have it on the sheet. And one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to dimension the overall size of our tool tote. Okay. So if I come up to annotate, annotate is going to give me a dimensioning feature that when I click on the either the whole line and drag down, it will give me 18 inches. All right. If I click on now here this line is not continuous so what I'm going to need it to do is I'm going to need to highlight the corner with those green dots And I'm going to go around, and, and usually what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to dimension in a way that my dimensions share a view. So this 18 inches is also 18 inches from this view. Okay, so that's desirable. In this case, uh, my 7 inches is also going to share, if I ran a 45 degree angle here, it would share this view to the top. So I need to also dimension from the very top to the bottom. And I'm going to run that out just like that. OK, now <clears throat> that gives me approximately what the overall size of the tool toad is. It is 18 inches long, it's 7 inches wide, and it's 7 and a half inches deep. Okay. However, for you to begin the construction of these, you needed individual parts. So what we're going to do is we're going to go around and, and dimension most of the easy ones. All right, just like just as if it is on your sheet. All right, so I'm going to dimension that the thickness of this piece is 0.75. I'm going to need to know that the thickness of my ends are 0.75. I'm going to need to know that the width of my sides here are 4. 
and then this guy over here has a lot of dimensions on it and we're gonna stick with what we know so far okay. the overall width of the bottom is five and a half we already know that the length is seven and a half but in order to come up and cut this arc we need to indicate that is four and a quarter. All right. Uh, eventually, we're going to need to know what the measurements of that chamfer is. Uh, the chamfer. All right. Now, on this one, uh, it's usually bad practice to put your dimensioning on the image. So once we click OK we're going to be allowed to drag it over to the other side. Okay. Now the other thing we're going to do is this is 0.38 which is not really uh, indicative of what the true measurement is. So we're going to run the tolerance all the way out to 3 quarter or 3 eighths which is 0.375. And we're going to do the same thing here. Okay, just like on the example. All right. Now, there's also uh, one of the things that I want to do is I'm going to indicate on here where the center line of that hole is because when we make or create holes, we typically mark them with a center line so we know where that dr uh, where to uh, to drill that hole. When I dimension these. When I dimension any kind of other lines, it typically has uh, a little arrow. Okay, that indicates a, a straight line. When I dimension a arc or a hole, you can see that there's a line or the, a little circle near my arrow. All right, and that's kind of what I want because I'm going to click on that, and it's going to create a radius for me. Remember, that's what we use to create that. And here is also one that automatically defaults to the uh, diameter. Okay. Now, in that case, uh, I wanted to show you that, but I'm not satisfied with that because that's going to give me the diameter of that hole, but it's not going to give me the depth. All right. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to OK, but then I'm going to right click and delete it because I want to show you that this part does not go all the way. So instead of dimensioning over here that it's a, a 0.75 inch diameter hole uh, and how deep to go, I'm going to use this dimension. Uh, and that will create the same diameter and this is going to indicate that it is at a depth of 0.5. All right, so that's, that's a little more efficient. But there is one more thing that we needed to know that at the very top to where that line creates its intersection is an inch and a quarter. All right. All right. So what I need to do is I need to look at my original and see if I've missed any of my dimensions. And before I start to put these notes on here, I think it's time that we can put our parts list together. All right. Our parts list is also under the Annotate tab. And if I click on Parts List, and I can select what I want to make the parts list of, what's really nice about this is all I have to do is select the tool tote that I've put together already. And it will create a box. Now I'm going to put this up in the top here. I don't have a whole lot of room, so I'm going to have to kind of squeeze it down there. And it automatically comes up with the parts that, I've, uh, that, that it's already assembled with. The tool toad end, the tool toad bottom, the tool toad side, and the tool toad handle. And it will allow me to put a description in here. Okay. Now, the tool toad end actually measures... So I'm going to actually physically type this in, 
seven five by five point five by seven point five. As you can see, once I've typed it, it automatically updates it over here. Okay. We're going to look at the bottom. Bottom measures 0.75 by 5.5 5 by 16.5. The sides. 0.75 by 4 by 18. And the handle, I really only need the diameter by the length. Click apply. Here we go. And then one last thing is I want to match up my item numbers to my parts okay. and we're going to do that by creating a text leader we could also do it with the balloons let me show you the balloons balloons are really nice but in here the balloons oh okay. um, well let's go ahead and use the balloons it might be a little bit different on our, our original I went and go, uh, went and used some graphics, but I could uh, we could do both. What I did was I used a text leader, in this case we just typed in our uh, side was item number three, so I could type in number Check my caps. All right, so my number three, what am I doing here? Three handle. Let's try that again. 